idea that, you know, we have information at our fingertips whenever we want it, whenever we need it. Information finds us. We can be on the move at the coffee shop in our home. And the experience that we experience is actually very intuitive. It doesn't take my eight-year-old very long to figure out how to do something on my phone, right? But now if we compare that with what we see in operations on the factory floor in the enterprise as a whole, quite a dramatic difference, quite a divergence. We see these, this experience that we found in our consumer world is very, very different now from what we see experience in the, in the enterprise world. And with that comes a number of challenges, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's look a little bit more at that experience. So as a consumer, right? Um, I mentioned I can search almost anything. I get recommendations to me so that I can manage this overload of information. It has changed this, this idea of availability of data has changed almost everything that I do from shopping, uh, you know, to driving, even how I share information. So really, really transformative. <clears throat> As an employee, and particularly with some of the next generation of workers, they come expecting sort of a similar type of experience um, where they have information that's in context, where they have relevance to their likes and dislikes, where things are available anytime and also can be commanded by speech, by voice. You know, I, I mentioned my eight-year-old. <clears throat> I don't think he's ever going to even learn how to type. Right? He searches everything by voice. And not only that, no matter what question he has, magically there's an answer. I don't know for many of you in the room, but when I was growing up, that certainly was not the case. It was quite an exercise to find information. But the demands of the modern manufacturing workforce, I think we can all agree, there have been many, many studies done. This one that I'm showing you actually was the third done by Deloitte in cooperation with the Manufacturing Institute, where they looked at this aging workforce. 3.5 million jobs will need to be filled over the next decade. And 2.7 million of that will be due to retirement. That's quite a dramatic number. Why? Because those people retiring are our most experienced. They're the ones when there's a problem on the shop floor that everyone goes to and says, what's going on? They somehow know how to figure that out. Or they touch the machine, or they listen to the machine, and they're like, oh yeah, this is the problem you're having. Right? That experience, that knowledge is embedded within the worker themselves. And according to the Bureau of Labor, the, in the US at least, the median age of a skilled worker is about 44.5. Just let that digest for a little bit. The skill gap expected is about 2.0 million jobs will go unfilled. Okay? And this isn't even taking into consideration any geopolitical stuff that's going on. <laughs> okay. Now you may say, yes, skill gap, there's a lot of factors that are involved in that. It's not just technology. And I completely agree with you. There's a very human factor to all of this as well. There's a lot of training and all of these sort of things. I completely agree. However, technology does have a place, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. How can we use technology to help us with this aging workforce to gather that knowledge and make it available, almost like you have an instant expert at your fingertips, not too dissimilar to what you see when you Google something. Um, you want to have the agility of your workforce, the ability for your workforce to pick up something new very, very quickly and to reduce the amount of training, almost train on the job. Think about how we learn today. You just go on YouTube and figure out how to do I, I learned how to knit. I went on to YouTube, watched a video. I'm like, oh, I'm a knitter now. <laughs> Amazing, right? This is how our modern, this is how this generation solves problems. Now, I realize you're going to have a gap. You're going to have very experienced workers who this is not native to. And then you're going to have this next generation of workers. And so you've got to manage that, too. But this idea of leveraging technology to help is, is really important. If we look at the key pillars in manufacturing, you know, we talk about the digital thread, and that's bringing all that data. So if you think about Google search, you think about Gmail, you think about all of those things, we're really talking about sources of data that bring together across the life cycle to put data into context. That's the digital thread. When we talk about new business opportunities, how can we leverage this data in new ways to develop new business? How can we use that data to build virtual twins Right? of a manufacturing process, of a piece of equipment, et cetera, et cetera. But the one we're really going to hone in on here is how do we leverage all that data and really bring about this digital workforce, this idea of workforce efficiency, improving the way that we make decisions, providing data at the right place, the right time, to really help our workers of the future. And we're going to talk specifically 
In that box, you see a number of technologies in, as part of Google Cloud, but we're going to talk specifically about two of those technologies today, one of which is Google Glass, and the other is Dialogflow. So let's first jump to Google Glass. Yes, many of you probably remember Google Glass from the consumer days. It's back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Google Glass has really become now a really interesting technology for the enterprise. And you know, for a number of reasons. We talked about all of this idea of how do I have information at my fingertips, but what we didn't talk about is how do we deliver that technology in a hands-free way, right? We've got workers in places where we need their hands on something, and it doesn't have to be their HMI screens. Uh, we need to improve safety and quality. And how do we do that through data and making data readily available almost instantaneously, almost finding you? We need to be able to improve our training. We need to be able to do that in real time on the job. We need to have this agile information flow. And last but not least, how do we do this in a way that's really suitable to the worker being enhanced in their productivity and not slowed down by the process? So if we look at Google Glass and what it's been able to enable, we've talked about this idea of real-time business intelligence, you know, increasing the efficiency through notification, having it right there in your line of view, not having to be distracted and, or do a context switch, having it be improved quality and safety. We have numbers of, a number of, of situations where we have deployed this in factories today uh, where we've seen significant improvements in all of these areas. Learn while you do this whole idea of training and improving training, and then expert advice. So collaborate. How do we collaborate with someone, an expert, in real time? These are all the benefits of, of Google Glass. Now, I'm going to call Dan <laughs> onto the stage. He's a product manager for Dialogflow, and he's going to walk through a little bit about the AI side of it uh, in our product uh, uh, called Dialogflow. So Dan? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Jen. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Dialogflow. So Dialogflow is part of our Cloud AI family. Um, we have solutions, building blocks, and platform uh, as part of Cloud AI. It's uh, the leading AI portfolio in the industry. Uh, we're very excited about it. And um, uh, you know, I, um, if, if you're interested in the space, there's a lot of really great sessions to go to Google Cloud, Cloud Next on AI. Um, Dialogflow is part of our conversation group within uh, the building blocks. Uh, and what it does, it, it, it uh, handles conversations in natural language. And there are three main use case groups that it's useful for. Uh, connecting businesses to customers, uh, controlling IoT devices, and connecting businesses to employees. So, um, you know, the first could be for customer service or, or, or for selling things online. Um, the third could be for uh, connecting businesses to employees, so surfacing business information, uh, business intelligence, things like that. Uh, and today, we're really focused on the middle one, uh, where you could use conversation to power different smart devices out there, like Google Glass. Um, so the, the typical architecture we see is uh, you have all these channels on the left. And um, um, it could be sort of Google Glass with digital voice or uh, some other form. It comes to Dialogflow that does the natural language understanding, breaks it down into its basic structure with an intent and entities, and then it feeds it into your system uh, where you can do the fulfillment, uh, either in Google Cloud, like on a, with a cloud function, or um, you can even do it on-prem or on uh, Kubernetes or wherever you want. Um, so uh, we, Dialogflow is based on acquisition of API.ai. Um, last year at Google Cloud Next, we were super proud to uh, announce that uh, we uh, just recently crossed 150,000 developers in the Dialogflow community. Uh, this morning, we just announced we crossed 600,000. So it's very, very exciting, super strong momentum, um, you know, and um, there's really a, a, lot, a lot of great stuff that's happening in Dialogflow. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very competitive market. There's a lot of solutions out there to build bots or to build the conversations. But when we ask developers why they choose Dialogflow over the other solutions, the most, commonly, uh, most common response we get is it's because of the quality of the natural language and the machine learning. Um, so that's really what we're, we're kind of heavily investing in. And um, kind of the good news is now that Dialogflow is part of Google, um, 
you know, Google has been working on this problem of natural language understanding for over a decade, and um, we've built all of these tools for a better natural language understanding. All of these tools are now becoming available to Dialogflow. So this morning, we just announced five new major features for Dialogflow, like integration with uh, knowledge connectors, uh, like the ability to scale over phone, um, um, you know, a, a few other things like integrated um, uh, speech synthesis, and uh, they're um, they're all kind of we're making them easy to access with Dialogflow uh, because we're we're building it on Google services. Uh, so I think that's my last slide. Yeah. So with that, let me introduce uh, Anat that will take it from here. I just need to click on. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Anat. I'm a product lead at Platane. This is my first time at Next, and I'm really, really happy to be here with you and present to you what we've done. So um, uh, we're going to show you how we put AI and Platane's digital assistant on Google Glass and how it can transform the factory into the factory of the future. Platane is a software company. We develop softwares for smart factories. We connect the sensors on the production line, and we give our customers smart recommendation and intelligence alerts um, that help them produce better. So how do we do all that? We connect the sensors on the production line. We connect to customer service of records, ERP, PLM, other systems. Um, we get all that digital data, and we turn it into knowledge. Jen talked a little bit earlier about the digital twin, we do that. But that's not enough. We push it harder. We're aiming to help our customers produce better. So our digital assistant gives them a context aware and gives them recommendations and alerts as to what they should be doing right now. This is not a dream or not a vision. This is a reality. It is deployed on production um, with uh, um, industry leaders like Boeing, like Airbus, like Renault Sport, like Ashley, like Steelcase. We take our IoT um, professional. We put it on the cloud with our microservice um, state-of-the-art architecture. We use our intelligent digital assistant to give them the recommendations, the alerts that they need on that spot, on that minute. And above all that, we have a domain expertise in discrete manufacturing for over 100 hours of, of factories visiting all around the world. I don't know how many of you know what a manufacturing looks like, but actually, there are stations, workstations. Each worker is working at a workstation. And he's doing his part. That's a sequence. So he's doing his operation. Um, he's, and then he goes to the computer and reports it. Usually, they don't have a computer in each station. They work together. So he goes, he logs into his user, he reports something, and he goes back. Um, some of our customers don't even have computers. It's all done on paper. So yeah, I'm, I'm talking about actual pieces of paper that's called a root card. It tells them which steps needs to be produced um, to, do, to produce that um, work order. And the worker just um, signs it. So actually, imagine what would happen if this got lost. Now, we're producing more than one part. We have a lot of work orders, a lot of stations, a lot of worker. This is very, very complex. Um, a little bit about the challenges that they're facing. So paper-based um, reporting, most of our customers use that piece of paper. And there are not many computers on the production line. Um, their hands are busy working, doing whatever they need to to do during their actual production. So they can't use their hands to do something else. If we want them to report, they actually have to leave what they're doing, go report something, and come back. Um, as you saw before, 
the production complexity is really high. So it's not, it's not easy to keep them focused on their main task. Uh, Boeing CTO told us that 25% of uh, production time is spent on documentation and reporting. 25%, that's a quarter of their time. It's, it's a, a lot of time. And delayed reporting causes quality issues. These quality issues um, can cause defects on the parts that are being produced. So if we don't report on time, we don't remember exactly what we did. We might have switched materials, did something a little bit different. That's not really accurate. And the lack of visibility uh, prevents our manager to uh, get on the spot decision making. So when something changes in the production plan, let's say a worker is sick, a machine was broken, an urgent task just uh, came in. It's very hard for them to react to change. How are we going to solve all that? So we're going to take Platane's digital assistant, and we're going to put it on Google Glass. Um, we're going to use dialogue flow to communicate with our system and we're going to help them make it much, much better. A little bit about our ar architecture. So with the help of Nagaro, um, Google partner, we um, developed an, a, a Glass app. We put it on Glass Enterprise Edition. And, this is an, and it, it communicates to our software. But this was not enough because we wanted NLP. We wanted our user to stay focused on his task and just say something when he wants it to be reported. So we connected to Dialogflow, and Dialogflow is connected to our system, and this closes the loop. Um, so all three of them are working together to get that done. I'm going to present two use, case, two use cases. The first one, um, I'm going to show you how we're going to revolutionize the production worker's life. So Platane's digital assistant helps him in the morning when he gets into his shift. And it pushes the critical information that he needs uh, in order to get his work done. So this is like the one big change, because he doesn't need to look through things. He just puts on his glass and sees the most urgent thing to take care of. Um, then he starts working on it. and you get real-time visibility of the production progress. After that, Platane's digital assistant helps him to optimally allocate materials um, to his specific work order and find them easily in the storage. And finally, we're using NLP to report uh, that we've done with this uh, work order. Now I'm going to go to the demo, which we're all waiting for. Just one second, because I need to uh, wire myself with a mic. So I'm switching to the demo. What you're seeing in front of you, on the right side, you're seeing a mirroring tool that's showing you exactly what I'm seeing on my glass. On the other side, you're seeing our systems UI. This is the web-based UI, user-based. So if somebody wants to log in to his system and see his own work, that's what he does. So let's imagine I'm a worker, and I'm coming to my shift in the morning. Um, and I put on my glass, and I want to know what I need to do. So I'll log into Platane TPO. You're seeing what I'm seeing. And now I can see there are two alerts. Good night, John Smith. There are two alerts in clean room station. OK. So I see there are two alerts. I can see that as well on the UI. I can also swipe and see the general situation in my station. This is where I work. So I want to know what's, what's in there. I have two kits, one roll, which is a raw material, and two pending work orders. Obviously, 
I want to start work on the urgent tasks, but I want to see what's going on with those alerts. Swipe to see all alerts. So this is a huge improvement. Platine's digital assistant just pushed the most critical alert, the most urgent task to the worker. He doesn't have to look for anything. He sees that this is the most urgent one, and if he swipes, he sees the other alert. Obviously, I would want to work on the most urgent task. I can either process the work order or mark it as done if I forgot to do that yesterday. But there's still work needs to be done on this work order. So I'm going to process it. Um, now if I switch, if I go to the UI and I refresh it, I see that this um, work order is being processed right now. So my team members, my managers, they all know that I'm working on this right now. This is no papers at all and really easy. Not going to any computers, just doing it simply on my glass. Now, in order to do my task, I need to get some materials. But the storage is very large. It has a lot of raw materials. Some of them fit my order, others doesn't. So I need to go in there and find one. Most of them would just go in, get the first material, just pick it up. Not necessarily the optimal one, or quite surely it's not going to be the optimal selection for their work order. But they have Google's, uh, Google's Assistant and Platane's Digital Assistant on their glass. So they can talk. And they're going to say, OK, Glass, talk to TPO. What would you like to do? Help me select materials. Your order hash low dash one seven oh seven twenty eighteen dash oh three is missing two materials. How many would you like to pick up? I want to pick up two materials. Take a boxy hash roll dash one seven oh seven twenty eighteen dash oh two five from shelf three A. Carbon hash roll dash one seven oh seven twenty eighteen dash oh two two from shelf twelve. Okay. So what you saw right now is Platane's digital assistant looking at all those different parameters, which work orders needs to be completed today, what is the stock, um, which, uh, how many um, material is needed for this specific work order for others. And we allocated the specific material to that specific work order. On top of that, we told our worker exactly where he can find it. So no waste of time going through many raw materials. Sometimes it's very difficult to actually find that material. So we directed them exactly where they need to be. If we look on our UI, we just refresh it, you can see those two roles were um, allocated to the work order. Roll 25, roll 22 were added in. So this material is not going to be used anywhere else but for this work order. Now I've finished doing what I need to do, and I just want to let everybody know, or just want to mark that I've finished my, my task. I'm going to use NLP again, dialog flow again. I'm going to say, please report that I've finished. Is this recorder finished? Yes. Great job. The work order has been archived. OK. Now closing the loop, if I look back on the UI, my managers, my team members, they all know I finished this task. So let's switch back a little bit to the slide. Just to recap for a minute what we saw. We saw Platane's digital assistant push that specific work order that needs processing right now, not tomorrow, not in a few hours, right now. We get the real-time visibility of the production progress. Uh, we get optimized material allocation for our specific work order. And we use NLP um, to report that we're done with this work order. OK, the second use case is going to show you how we're following the digital thread, how we're um, 
helping our customers use that information in the right context. So Platane's digital assistant just recognized that there is a defected shipment. Uh, we analyzed defected parts that were produced and we could trace it back to that specific shipment that was received yesterday. Normally, to go pick these materials out of production would take literally days. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, days. You had to go through tons of papers just looking for them and walk through enormous floors. This is like, this is a small room in comparison to a factory. This is walking through enormous floors looking for that specific material. In mean, meantime, this material is still being used on production. So we're still wasting production time on working on defected materials. Luckily for me, I have my glass. So I'm going to talk to my glass and I'll say, help me locate materials received yesterday. Which material type? Fiberglass. Who is the manufacturer? Fiberglass Incorporated. We've received three fiberglass rolls from Fiberglass Incorporated. How many would you like to find? All three of them. Swipe to see all materials. Okay. Now, on my glass, I see that we have one fiberglass roll, one material in Keating Station. This is probably being used as we speak, so I would want to go there. I can also see that the two other ones are material storage. This is less urgent. I can go pick them up later. Now, if I look in, in our system UI, and I'll try and find that um, specific role that we're looking at. I see the two kits were already produced from that material, so I need to stop them from being used on production any further. I can see that as well on my glass. So if I tap it, I can see the related kits. Now I'm following the digital thread. Now I see that kit 264 and 402 are both in WIP storage. I want to go and quarantine them. I want to make sure that nobody's going to pick up that kit and use it in another work order. So I can move it to quarantine. And now if I navigate to this specific kit, I see I see it's been moved. OK. Switching back to our presentation, recap a little bit about what we saw. We saw Platane's digital assistant detect defected materials. We used NLP to locate um, the damaged materials. We followed the digital thread to detect the, the parts that were produced from that material, and we quarantined that specific material. This is it for the glass part. I just want to summarize a little bit. Let me get disconnected here. OK. Just to summarize a little bit what we saw. We saw um, that we can prevent quality issues that has occurred or will not occur on production. When we're putting the glass on the worker, we're making sure that we report everything on the spot. We don't need to go anywhere. We don't need to look for the computer. We don't need to take the paper. We just report it. We have the hands-free, glove-friendly production, so our workers can actually work and, and focus on their production. And we minimize the distracting tasks 
um, that our worker needs to deal with. So he doesn't need to report. Going back to what Boeing CTO told us, 25%, we're reducing it because we have the glass on, on the worker. And we enable on-the-spot decision-making that helps our managers um, get, it, get it right on the spot with the right data. Um, thank you, everybody. I think we'll be uh, getting some questions now. <laughs>